Hey McFly subscribers. So I've got a little channel update for you. Again, it's Monday. Um, I, uh, with the trouble that we've had the last week um, with losing our dog and having to put her down, it's been a little tough on my kid. And uh, our fish tank that we had gotten, I think you got some of you remember when I made the video of us getting it, um, a, a lot of the fish had a lot of babies, and uh, actually the shrimp had babies too. And the tank, it's only a 10 gallon tank, and it's completely overcrowded. We had gotten three fish and three shrimp, and it just, uh, now we've got like 30 fish and 30 shrimp. Um, they're just having babies left and right. We're gonna take some of the fish back, but after uh, losing the dog, I just couldn't do that to my kid. I could not take the fish back to the store. So, um, you know, I just, I couldn't take another pet away from him. He's been spending a lot of time in front of the fish tank and, uh, you know, um, it's kind of, it's kind of comforting to him, I guess, in a way. It's been sad. Um, he actually kind of understood, uh, when we told him the next morning what had happened. Um, and he kept on asking for where Zoe was, um, I mean, he was crying, you know, and he kept on saying, bring her back and... It was tough. I was just, it's a tough thing as a dad to try to explain to your kid um, why the dog's dead. In fact, uh, he kind of blamed me for it, um, you know, because I was the one that took the dog away. Um, he had begged to keep her, and I said, no, we got to take her, and then, yeah, so that was tough. I just couldn't, I, did, I didn't have the heart to take his fish back to the tank, or to, back to the uh, fish store. But they are outgrowing the tank, and um, it requires like water changes like twice a week now, and it's kind of a lot of maintenance. So I decided I was going to get another fish tank. I haven't fully set it up yet. Um, I'm waiting for some plants from the fish store. And I'd like to kind of set it up with those plants um, before I put water in it. It's just a little easier when uh, when there's it's not filled with water. So my tank I actually put here in, in the in in my uh, office in here and I'll, I'll put a quick little um, video of me setting it up I actually did uh, video that I videoed myself setting it up so you'll be able to see that um, I haven't gotten the like I said I haven't gotten the plants yet but I'll do a quick little setup on how I arrange the the wood if you guys are interested but this is going to be the tank from now on that I use for my underwater um, uh, fish or uh, underwater uh, swim um, of my my flies So that's kind of cool. I guess uh, a new scenery for you guys. It's a little bigger. This is a 15 gallon So it's a little longer um, Allow a little more time to you know a little more uh, Length for it to swim through the water. So you'll see more action of the flies. So that's good um, Another thing I want to talk to you guys about is uh, cleaning fly line. So I've got So I've got this reel actually just recently cleaned it. Um, I, I don't need to again. But every time you go out fishing, um, every single time, you need to wipe it down. So what I do is I take a, a paper towel. And I actually just did this like two or three days ago. Um, I've forgotten when I got back uh, the last time, but with all that's going on, I forgot. But you can see there's like dirtiness on this uh, paper towel. You can see the lines. And this is coming from the, the fly line. Um, and so, and that was coming from this one. And so it gets dirty, even though it doesn't look dirty, you might be fishing uh, clean water, you still need to clean your line. And so what you want to do, this is what I do, um, could be wrong on it, but this is what I do. Um, I take a paper towel, I'd actually take two, okay, one dry, and then what I do is I put a little, uh, like, soap, Dawn, dishwasher soap, that's what we use, um, I'm sure. Palomalo or whatever that other one is or whatever you guys use probably work but I use Dawn I put a little little bit of it on there I kind of wet the napkin and then wring it out real good um, you know just so it's moist with a little soap and then I pull all the line off I usually have this on the end of my fly rod so I'll have like the, the back piece of the fly rod strip all the line off like so and then with the wet one and this will be from the back. I usually go like that, fold it, I, I, I pull it out like this, I fold it, and then I, I turn it 
over like that and then I squeeze real hard and then I'm able to really put a lot of pressure and I can just pull as this goes all the way up. And that's with the wet one, I'll do that. Then once I do that, I go back the other direction. So then I'll turn it back over, I'll turn the, the um, it over so I'm not getting more dirt on it. Um, fold it over and then go back towards the reel. So I'll strip this line out, you know, back towards the reel like that. Go up and down it um, once or twice. Uh, sometimes you have to, if it's really dirty, you want to do it until you don't see any more uh, dirt come off. And once that happens, then I'll dry it. So I'll take the dry one and I'll do the same thing. I'll go up and down with the dry one. And then I take one more piece. I usually what I do is I rip off a piece of the dry one, but I take this. So I, I use real line a lot. That's my favorite line, line. Yeah, I think some of the other fly line makers have their own type. Uh, but this is Rio's Agent X fly line dressing. Um, you can use it to clean it also. Um, but basically I just take a smaller piece um, and then do the same thing. I'll just put like, usually it's, it's like that big. And then I'll just kind of put a whole bunch of this in there. And then I go back through. I just lay this on top and fold this over. Smaller piece, of course. And I don't need as much pressure. Um, and a lot of times I won't even fold it over like that. I'll just kind of hold it like that and just bring it through. And that puts that coating on there. Now with this stuff, I don't know about the other brands like uh, Scientific uh, Angler or any of the other fly lines, but um, it says don't use on full sinking line or the sink tip of a sink tip line. Um, so you want to do it only on floating line, I guess, because this adds like a bit of a floating, keeps it up higher. Um, and... Uh, you want to wait at least five minutes. It says best to wait 24 hours though, but basically you put it on there and then you wait for a little while for it to dry, soak into the line, and then you buff it out with dry. Then you take the dry cloth once more and then you come in and you go down it and back up the line. Um, and that buffs it out. And what it does when you use that stuff, um, when a line gets dirty, two things happen. One is, it can start sinking. So if you have a floating line, this might start sinking below the surface of the, of the water. Um, it won't stay floating. And the reason why is the dirt weighs a little bit um, and it also keeps this from being smooth so the surface tension is kind of changed. Um, so putting, putting a dressing on or cleaning your line, getting the dirt off is really important. Second off, it makes this not as uh, slick. And so we all know, slicker the line is, the better it's going to cast. It's going to go through your guides be better um, and not get hung up. Um, so that's, that's why you want to do it. Um, if you ever notice with your line, if you have a floating line and you see the tip start to sink below the surface or the whole line starts to sink below the surface a lot, it's because you're not cleaning it. You need to clean your line. Um, all brands, you have to do it. Um, you just have to do it. I, every single time I go out fish, um, I come back and I will wipe it down. I try to do it that day. If you can't do it that day, the next morning or as soon as you can get to it. It only takes five minutes, but it's going to save you having to buy a new line every year. A lot of people go, oh, I, buy, I just buy a new line every year. Well, why? You know, why, why do you feel like you need to do that? You shouldn't. Um, this should last a long time as long as you take care of it. And get yourself some dressing. I think, uh, like I said, Scientific Angler, um, uh, I know Orvis, I think, makes some um, for their lines. I think you could probably use this, the Rio Agent X, for all the other brands, but, um, you know, they have their own ideas of what, what works best for their line, so you might want to get their brand. But if you use Rio a lot, I'm a big fan of Rio lines. Um, this Agent X is awesome. And if you have trouble finding it, I'll put a link down in the description section. I get mine on Amazon, actually. Uh, my local shop, I don't think, has any. Um, at least last time I was there, when I went to buy this, they didn't have any. Maybe sometimes they do, I just didn't see it. So I, I bought this online. I bought this on uh, Amazon. Another thing I want to talk to you guys about. So um, for a while now, I've been posting links to products I use or, uh, for instance, if I'm tying flies, you know, um, for the materials that I use, uh, just to help you guys out. It's just been some extra that I've been doing. Um, and sometimes I use Amazon links because what I do is I try to find the best deal. Sometimes it's at Amazon. Um, sometimes it's at other, you know, like online fly shops. Um, you know, and 
you know, I've just been doing that for you guys. Um, and I'm really happy to be able to do it. But someone, uh, one of my subscribers had let me know. They kind of uh, messaged me and they were like, hey, you know, um, are you using Amazon Affiliate? And I was like, what is that? Like, well, it's, I thought that that's why you post that. And I said, no, no, I just post it because, you know, um, I want to help you guys out. And he said, well, why aren't you doing Amazon Affiliate? I mean, if you post Amazon links already, um, you can get some money back. So I looked at it and, you know, I mean, it's not a ton, but I do get a little money back uh, when I post items up. So I signed up for the Amazon Affiliate. So most of the links from now on from Amazon are going to be affiliate links. So basically, I will make a little money. You'll actually, if you buy it, you'll be helping out the channel. Um, kind of win-win for everyone. Uh, one thing, though, that I want to stress and I want you guys to understand is um, this is not the main thing that I'm doing to try, try to make money. This is not my full-time job. So I would rather, um, for me, I, instead of making a, a you know, buck here or there, um, I would rather give you guys the best products or the best uh, deals for the best products or uh, link to the best area. So I'm only, I, I pro there's a promise to you guys from this point on while using the affiliate uh, links, I will not uh, post up um, an Amazon product just so that way I get a kickback from it. It would have to be from a place that I bought from before or um, I think it's the best deal. Um, or at least the same deal as anywhere else. For instance, a sage rod. Um, if I was going to post up the sage rod that I use, you go anywhere, you're not going to find a better deal on the sage method because they have a top shelf policy. If somewhere sells it for cheaper than the, I think, 850, 849 or something like that, um, they would lose privilege to be able to sell that product again. They have a top shelf policy. You cannot sell for less than this amount, and this is it, this is MSRP flat out. Um, you can't change the price. can't advertise that way. You can't do anything. And so for those instances, I'll definitely be using Amazon. It would be nice to get a little money back. Um, for instances like uh, hooks, I find that Amazon has great deals on hooks. I get a lot of my hooks on Amazon personally. Um, if, if I need like bulk, they sell a lot of bulk hooks. They sell a lot of like smaller item hooks. I find it to be the best deals. Um, but I also find that, you know, sometimes like um, uh, dumbbell eyes. So, for instance, on this fly, um, dumbbell eyes, I don't think are the best deals on Amazon. So I'm not going to link there. I'm going to link to like an online fly shop that I think has the best deals. Because I that's what I want to give to you guys. I don't want to do this just to make money. I want to produce a product, um, a video that's going to be helpful. And it's not helpful if I'm just worried about making money. Okay, so the, the quality of the links are not going to change. I'm definitely going to continue giving you guys the best links. I just wanted to be honest up front and tell you guys what's going on. So uh, from this point on, anytime I link to an Amazon product, it'll be an affiliate link. But again, that doesn't mean that I'm only going to link to Amazon. And you will see that. Um, if you somehow find a better deal than what I'm linking um, even if it's not to Amazon, if it's somewhere else and you, you find a better deal and you're like, Hey, look at this deal, private message me, let me know. And I will do my best to change it. Cause that, that's awesome. If you guys find better deals, Hey, you know, let's, let's work out this like community here together to find the best deals. That being said though, um, I link to online sources because, well, I'm doing an online video, right? Um, this is not at all to take away from your local fly shop. Number one, first and foremost, try to buy from your local fly shop. The thing is, not every single one of my subscribers have a local fly shop that is easy to get to. And not all of my subscribers um, have a local fly shop that has all the items that they're looking for. For instance, if you have a local fly shop that might not sell um, a certain dubbing or something. Um, heck, like when I went to go get the Rio Agent X, um, the, the dressing, they were out. At least I couldn't find it. So I bought it online. And this happens sometimes. You know, you might be specifically looking for a type of fly line, like what I use. And you're like, hey, that, that looked like a good line. I want to get that. You go there. They don't have it. And that's what you have to buy. That's what you want. I mean, get it online, you know, if you have to. But do your best to try to buy from your local fly shop. You might pay a premium, usually you will, because they have overhead, they have costs. 
um, but uh, not like an online fly shop would. But a lot of times you're getting the product right away. You get a little better expertise from the, the owner or the worker that works there at the fly shop. They can give you better advice, more so than I can, because they're your local fly shop. They know your area more than I do. Um, I know my area. So, um, so there's that. Um, don't always take my word 100% on things. Um, you know, talk to people in your area because your area is going to be different than mine. Hope, uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this uh, little time with me today. Um, thank you guys for the prayers, um, continued prayers for my family, and my dog. It's, um, it's still tough, but it's getting better. Um, you know, um, trying to explain to my kid is probably the worst part. That's the hardest part. I, I, you know, that, that right there is the part that, <laughs> that I wish I didn't have to go through. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's also something that is also cherished too, because it builds those memories with my kid and helps me teach him, um, about these things, about death and, and life and what goes on. So again, thanks for watching guys. Um, if you have any questions or uh, comments or you disagree or totally agree with anything I say on any of my videos, um, go ahead and write it in the description or in the comment section. Um, on every single one of my videos, I have a full, uh, you know, I usually write a little more info about kind of the video and whatnot in the description section. Always check those out. Um, always check the description section out. There's extra info, sometimes links to good prices on products, whatnot. Go out there and uh, catch some fish. I'll see you on the next video.